uh, here in the state of North Carolina. Uh, I'd like to introduce uh, an amazing person that I have, uh, I cannot speak enough of as far as a, co a compadre in crime here, uh, putting the, uh, the marching band together for this fall. His name is Mr. John Owens. He'll be presenting a What is Leadership Leading to Drum Major. He is the Assistant Director of Bands and Program Coordinator here at Campbell University. He was the drum major for three years at the high school level and two years at the collegiate level here at Campbell University. He has a Bachelor of Science in Sports Management and Political Science. He has a Master in Business Administration with a concentration in Marketing. He will be starting his doctorate in Strategic Leadership in the spring. Uh, he currently, in addition to his responsibilities at Campbell, teaches elementary music at North Harnett Primary School and is also the national drama coach for International uh, Pentecostal Holiness Church. His favorite leaders are Walt Disney, Abraham Lincoln, and Martin Luther King Jr. And without further ado, I am uh, pleased and honored to introduce our very own John Owens, what is leadership leading to drum major? Good morning, everybody, or good afternoon at this point. Uh, haven't really left my office yet today, uh, so it is afternoon time. Uh, I'm so glad that you can join us. Uh, thank you, Dr. Phillips, for the kind words. Um, today, this presentation is not designed for me to sit here and talk to you about leadership. Leadership is not about sitting here. Leadership's about getting out and getting things done. And so, um, and we'll, we'll see a quote on that a little later. But what we're gonna do first is the first thing in the whole class, what is leadership? So what is leadership when we look at it is up to the person who is in that position. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna start out with a word cloud. So I am gonna be posting on uh, a link. So this is where I need you if you can are on a computer or if you are capable of going to uh, it is this website at the top of the screen. It's menti.com. It's going to ask you for a code. Uh, and uh, the code is 417012. If you will go in there and put the three words that you think uh, Leadership. What does leadership mean to you? You only can use one word and what are the three words that you will use? As you submit that, it will pop up and uh, onto our word cloud so that we all can see. Uh, so if you will start doing that, I'm going to give you a few seconds to do that because it's going to be interesting to see what leadership means to different people. Uh, and so please, if you can go to menti.com, the code is 417012, 4170124170124. And this is the only time I'm going to ask you is while we're on this site uh, is to go to this. We'll do two exercises here and then we'll go. You start to see words popping up, humility, compassion, integrity, trustworthiness, responsibility, loyal, loyalty, uh, lots of good words. We're going to give everybody another 30, 45 seconds to get their words on. And then we're going to start going through some of these words. And, and then I'm going to give you what my definition of leadership is. Oh, I like influence is coming in. Uh, trustworthiness. Oh, we're getting lots of word. Empathy. Empathy. Uh, and the bigger the words are, that means more people is, is putting that. It won't put empathy multiple times. Uh, this software is designed to, as like loyalty has been used multiple times. Empathy has been used multiple times. Thank you for participating in this and doing this. It's a great way for us to see what other things are. So I'm gonna start going through some of these and how they relate to leadership. Um, and so that we can start going uh, and looking at what is our definition of leadership. All of us in this workshop are looking at what is a leader. And so let's look at some of these definitions and let's put our definition of leadership together. So uh, the word that is the most used right now is empathy. 
empathy, meaning you care. To me, that as a leader, that's an important word, that you care for the people you are leading for. Uh, one of the quotes that we're going to see a little bit later is um, from Abraham Lincoln, uh, and it states that no man should be governed unless they consent to it. Um, and so empathy is a part of that consent process um, because if you don't have empathy for someone who's going through a time, as we are all going through this COVID-19 era and this COVID-19 problem, then we are not doing what we are supposed to do as leaders because we are not meeting people where they are. Leadership is all about meeting where people where they are not bringing them to our level or not us going down to their level, but bringing it them where we are all on the same level. And so we got to work together to do that. And that's one of the things we'll talk about a little bit more. Uh, responsibility. We talked about this with our athletic band staff here at Campbell last night. Responsibility. A leader cannot say that we are, I'm going to get this done and then they don't get it done. Um, because then we lose trust and trustworthiness is another word that is used in this uh, word cloud. So trustworthiness and responsibility to me, responsible has been mentioned. Those are some things that we as leaders have to be people who are truthful and that we tell everyone exactly what we mean. Uh, loyalty. Loyalty is, is key. Uh, in everything that we do. If you trust a person, loyalty goes back to trust. If you trust a person, you're more likely to stick with them through the good and the bad. Let's be real, guys. We're all going to have bad days. We're all going to have days where we just go, really, I don't want to do this, or I really don't want to deal with people today. Uh, guess what? If people, if you have been loyal to people, they're going to be loyal to you because they're going to get you through your good and your bad days. Um, I want to keep going on some of this and then I'm watching my time to make sure I don't spend a ton of time uh, past what I had allotted for this. Uh, engagement. This is a great word I want to start. I was going to teach this part later. Um, and I'm going to switch over for a moment and I want to see some of you, see some of you have your cameras on, some of you don't. But I want to switch over to see your faces on this one. Drum majors, uh, down at the everybody that's on here, if you see at the bottom of your screen, you see you should see a reaction. If you can click that, if you're a drum major, give me a thumbs up. Either at the high school. Uh, okay, cool. We got some. We got some high school. Yeah. All right. So drum majors at the high school and college level. Uh, really speaking to you on this. Uh, this is not. As a drum major, it is not your job to just tell everybody what to do. Yes, we got to get up on our on the podium and we got to flap our hands. That is one of the most important things we do. We conduct, we flap our hands. That is part of what we do. That is, in my opinion, it is only a small part of what we do. Because if you are conducting and you're not a leader, are you really doing anything other than just flapping your hands? No. Part, why does a conductor matter? A conductor matters because they are helping uh, the people in the band or orchestra or the choir to get through the piece of music. They are helping those individuals to become a group. So you as a leader can't do that if you don't do stuff off the podium. If you don't build relationships with people off the podium. And it's really hard, and I speak to high school uh, students about this when I work with their drum majors all the time. High school students, uh, they get this, I'm the drum major, so all I need to do is sit up there and conduct. No, your job is very much more than that. Your job is to get out on the field, be part of the band. Do not isolate yourself on that podium, because if you do, then the students that you are leading are not going to follow along with what you're doing. Then they're just not going to look at you as a leader anymore. They're just going to look at you as a dictator. And, and that, then you're not going to be able to get what you need to get done. Um, dictators, when you look at the history of dictators and go throughout Western civilizations and how dictators work, they last and they, they can do 
a good job. Defining good job is they get what they want done. But when you look at dictatorships in the long run, they always end badly. It may take longer for some than others, but it will always end badly in a dictatorship. Uh, the other thing is if you don't get off that podium, then you are no longer an asset to your band director. You are a liability to your band director. Drum majors, I can tell you from being uh, a drum major, both at high school and the college level, your band director is using you to be the bridge between the students and themselves. Uh, and so you are still a student that is in that band and your director is relying on you to keep those relationships so that you can help them know the pulse of the students. So please make sure whenever we're doing this that we don't get into a box. And this is one of the things when I'm working camps and uh, I see that one of our drum majors from Campbell's own, Andrew, uh, when I'm working with Andrew, when he we're here at band camp, one of the things I'm going to look at Andrew and say, please don't get on that drum major podium and just stay there. Um, please get out because, uh, and it brings me to my next point, which is really key. And I'm going to come back to some of those word, the word cloud here in a minute. I want to go to this because of what y'all are telling me uh, as far as what you told me in some of the words. So the, um, when you look at leadership, and I, I really like this image uh, is this is the image of a wolf pack. Uh, and this is called basically I got this from a thing that says wolf pack leader wolf leadership. Uh, the people in the front of this line are the weakest people. We've all probably heard the saying you're only as strong as your weakest link. Uh, let's be real. Let's talk band. Let's talk competitions. Let's talk marching band. If you're getting judged or critiqued, uh, most of the time what happens, and I've judged competition, so I can sit there and go, uh, I get a marcher who's off step, let me just tell you, that I never goes off of them because if they make one mistake, they're more likely to make another. So who's normally the first person to mess up? Your weakest marcher. All right, so we are only as strong as our weakest marcher. So we talked about the beginning, we do not stoop down to their level and we do not expect them to get to our level. We bring them up to the level of expectation. And so you as a leader, your goal is to get together and work with them to help them along so that your weakest become one of your stronger. And then you will recycle that over and over again. And so when you see right here in the red circle, those are the sick and the weakest uh, animals. Then what is behind them is the strongest of the pack. This is important for you, especially when we look at how the marching band world is and we look at how um, even our military is set up, uh, is that we have rank and file. And so like here at Campbell, we have drum majors, then we have captains. These would be my captains right here. My captains are my strongest people in their respective sections. Captains for me, woodwind, brass, color guard, drum line. Those are my captains. I'm putting their, them here, right here, second in command. So they're right here with our weakest players. They're my strongest people. I want to get them close to the weak ones, all right? Then in this line, you have uh, just every day, people who are participants in the pack, all right? So for band, this may be the sophomore, junior, uh, that are seniors that are not in leadership, but do a great job in what they're doing. This green box is the, another strong member of the pack. They're there. Uh, and along with the yellow box, the yellow box is kind of protecting the weak ones. All right, they can flank out and do it. The green ones, if an attack comes from the mountains, they can flank in and get these or they can get to the other side. They're there to protect. To me, this is what our section leaders are. Our section leaders are the ones who are there to kind of help the pack get through everything they're supposed to do. 
motivate. Yes, let's get this done. We can do this. Hey, we're struggling with this part. How can we get better at doing this to be able to succeed? The final person is this one in the, the final wolf in this pack is who we are as drum majors. The, we are the ones who are bringing up the rear in everything. We are here to make sure that, hey, our section leaders and our captains are supported. Our people who are uh, just there getting the job done, they're supported. Our weak ones, we're there to support them. It's all about getting off the pack. You've got to be part of the pack in order to protect the pack. And so if you're on that stand, you're not part of the pack. You have isolated yourself. And therefore, you're not part of the group anymore. And so when I look at, uh, when I look at the different components of how that applies to us in the music world, especially when we relate that back to marching band, drum majors, empower your section leaders and your captains, or whatever your leadership structure is, you need to work through them and use their strengths. Because one of the things that we're also going to find, and I could teach a whole nother class on this, um, is we all have different strengths and weaknesses and we all have different personalities. Uh, people will tell you, if, they, if you ask the students that work with me all the time, they're going to tell you, I don't beat around the bush. I go straight to the problem. I'm going to deal with it. I'm not going to wait about it. I just want to deal with it and get it done because I don't want to continue to hear about a problem. That's not my style. But some of you might want to be, let me think about how's the best way to do this, or you just run from the problem altogether. If you run from the problem altogether, that would be a weakness because let me just tell you, what starts as a little teeny chirp will end up being a round of applause screaming at a concert loud. Please solve your problems as they come. But also you're going to find, so in that you're going to find that your section leaders, your captains, and they don't have to have a leadership title. You might just find uh, a senior, and I, I can think of one right now, um, our flute uh, section leader right now at Campbell. Really, if we really just put things on paper, uh, she could be our drum major. Uh, she's a senior, she's a kinesiology major. Uh, she's been flute section leader for three years. And you're like, why is she not woodwind captain? Or why is she not the drum major? Why? Because the way she handles those flutes, it's amazing. We never hear anything out of the flutes in the problem world. And uh, we as staff would have to pay the price uh, because the flute members would kill us if we take the, her from them. Uh, and so she has built that relationship so strong with that unit that we couldn't move her because she was the leader of that pack and that pack would defend her to the death. Uh, that, you don't have to be the drum major to do that. She can do anything she needs to do, and uh, our drum majors would tell you, if they need something out of the flute world, they're going to Diana because they, they, can't, get, uh, they can't get it done as good as Diana can get it done. Uh, the next thing I really want to, it could be uh, a senior. We got a senior trombone player. His name's Travis. Uh, he does an amazing job for us, but he wants nothing to do with leadership. Why? Because he can't follow through with the time commitments that that requires. So instead of uh, stretching himself too thin, he will. He just said, I can't do it this year. I can't be that section leader. But what he is able to do is we can pair him with a first year student who maybe never had been uh, in a band, marching band program, or maybe never march, or maybe struggling with music. And he would be more than happy to help that person get it around. So you got to be able to use people around you to build your weakness. Uh, your strengths, like I said, my strength is I'm going to deal with a conflict. That's, that's one of my big strengths. Um, and so I don't necessarily need a ton, a hundred percent help all the help all the time to get that done. But one of my weaknesses are that sometimes I'm not real good at explaining uh, what I want people to do. And that's one of the things that one of my student assistants, uh, he always is helping me 
Uh, can you explain a little bit more information about what you're asking to do? So one of the things, it's called a SWOT analysis. A SWOT analysis, and I'm gonna try this for the very first time, so let's see how this works. Uh, so a SWOT analysis, this is something it's on for yourself. SWOT, the S stands for strength, the W stands for weakness, the O stands for uh, opportunities, and the T stands for threats. All right, one of the threats that I have is my handwriting. So I apologize as you are reading this. Uh, my handwriting is not the best, uh, but we are, we're gonna look at this. I encourage all leaders to do a SWOT analysis, not only for themselves, but for their organizations and directors. I really encourage you as teachers and directors to do this for your program because this is going to help you to identify what do you do well in the strengths. List it down in a category uh, of what you do well. If this is an individual doing it, as my, if I was doing this with our drum majors, I would be, what are your strengths? What do you view as value that you bring to our program? And so I'm gonna take about, I hope if you can't do this written down, I just want you to think about it. But if you have something you can write down on or put it on your phone, type strength, and then put one of your strengths or two of your strengths. Really encourage you to do this. Directors, if you wanna do this as we're going through this, doing it with your program, go ahead and do that for your program. So we've got it either way. You can do it for your, as an individual or as a, um, as a director. So take a moment, think about that. And if someone would like to share, if someone would like to share uh, a strength that they, they think they, that is to either to their program or themselves, Put it in the message box, in the chat. I'd love to see some of the strengths that we, we have as a group that's on this, uh, on this chat. Don't feel like you have to, but if you're interested and you wanna do that, you can do it. Take about 30 more seconds on strengths. Communication, Lily, that's a great strength. Some people can, do not like to talk to people and you can be a great leader and not be a great communicator. So good, good job on, on being a communicator. That is uh, definitely a strength. All right, if you want to put a strength down, you may. Uh, consistency, uh, Kaylee, I completely agree with you. Uh, as I, we went to school together and I completely agree with you on your consistency. Uh, Peyton, one of your strengths is being a good listener. I am so glad that you said that Peyton. We as leaders, and this is one of the things I'm trying to show you in this workshop, but it's a small amount of time to make this happen. Uh, it's not all about what we say. It's not all about being on a stand as we talked about earlier. It's about being a good listener and being part of the group. Uh, and one of my favorite sayings to my staff and one of my favorite sayings to drum majors, uh, I'm not gonna ask you to do anything I wouldn't do myself. And so as you as a drum major, don't go ask someone to, uh, to go, pick up a go pick up a box and move it over there. If they've never seen you do it, then you shouldn't be asking them to do it. You need to go do it with them or go do it and let them see you do it. Don't ever ask someone to do something you're not willing to do yourself. Uh, one of the things, we just had our band house here, our students were painting. I got in there and painted some, but they didn't want me in there much because I don't paint real well, but I was willing to get in there and do it. Um, and so just by them seeing you do what you are asking of them, they're gonna give you loyalty and they're gonna respect you. So Peyton, great job uh, saying listening. Hey, we can learn so much just from listening to each other. And so 
be that example, go do it, whatever you're going to ask of them and listen to what they have to say. Uh, I hate the word buy-in. I despise it. They need to be part of the process. Um, I am not a person who believes in this. I got to get you to buy in. Nope. I don't believe in it. Buy in means that you're going to take your ideas and you're going to sell them to me. Nope. Don't believe it. Don't like it. I'm never going to give you 120% on that. Buy in, I will always, always give you 120% because I have the ability to be part of the decision making process. I own a piece of that decision. One of the things that we did with our students uh, leadership this year is we went through our student handbook and the student leadership rewrote our entire handbook. They worked and said, hey, we really want this policy to be in place or we want this policy to be in place. And we talked through the pros and the cons of that. And we as leaders, we're there to facilitate those conversations. So, uh, be, be a person who's willing to listen, as Peyton said, to facilitate conversation, to facilitate actions. All right, next we got W, which is for weakness. Take 30 seconds to a minute uh, to think about what are some weaknesses you have. I'm going to give you one of my, my weaknesses. I am a people-pleasing person and that I will do everything for everybody else at the detriment to myself. Uh, if you needed something and I had a deadline that was due at two o'clock today and you had something that would take 30 minutes that you had deadline at two o'clock today, I would help you get your deadline uh, met before uh, I am going to get what I am getting done. Uh, so uh, make sure that that's one of my weaknesses. What are some of your weaknesses? If you feel comfortable, please post a weakness. Uh, yeah, Iceland, I agree with you completely. Uh, I think Iceland, if I remember right, we talked about that a few times last year as far as, hey, you're, you're their best friend, but you got to be able to draw the line on that. Yep. Uh, and I don't, I'm scared to say your name. I'm going to say your last name, Fuller Ray. I have a difficult time explaining tasks sometimes. Uh, so I like that. Lily. Being assertive, that's a very good one. Andrew, not very outspoken. Andrew, and I'm going to use Andrew uh, as an example here for this. Andrew doesn't have to be outspoken. Um, and I was in the selection process where our student nomination team uh, nominated Andrew. He speaks by his actions. Words speak louder. I mean, actions speak louder than words. Uh, so, uh, Andrew, uh, not being very outspoken yet, you might say is a weakness, but I also think your actions speak louder than your words. So you speak a lot through your words. I mean, through your actions. Uh, Kendall, yes, I agree. I am awful at saying no. Uh, Kaylee, I would love to see that because I didn't, I didn't remember that. Uh, and so, uh, trying to work or quickly setting unrealistic goals. Hey, uh, KISS method is great for that weakness. Keep it simple, stupid. Uh, I say that to myself all the time. Uh, so I gotta, I'm not as outspoken as I should. Hey, I will take you doing the actions, you doing, showing them, hey, go. I need you to come help me move these instruments. Uh, then, hey, go do it with them. That's going to speak louder than you telling them what to do. They're going to follow you. So I, I encourage you to do that. Opportunity is the next one. O is opportunity. Opportunity, I look at it as it could be an opportunity to make your weakness a strength. Um, it could be an opportunity for you to grow. It could be an opportunity uh, for your program to grow. It could be an opportunity of like, for example, for me, I'm starting my doctorate in strategic leadership. That's an opportunity for me to gain more knowledge, but it's also a weakness uh, because I have to be able to manage my time and I can't put everybody before myself like I have in the past. So take a moment, 
Think of an opportunity you may have. This class could be an opportunity for you as a drum major to be able to think about what is a leader to you and how can you lead your band. So take a moment to think about opportunity. Again, if you feel comfortable, share it in the chat. Love to see some of the opportunities because some of these opportunities others would love to take place in. Uh, so what are some other opportunities for you or your programs? Peyton, I like it. Opportunity, ask for help when needed, great. Opportunity for you to be a true leader is sectionals. Uh, create new standards and traditions, yes, because our band, we have 60 some freshmen this year, our first year students, excuse me. And um, we're doing some cool new things with a generations program and some new things that we're doing. Opportunity to switch up how I run rehearsals this year, especially with plan B. COVID is an opportunity and it's a threat. I completely agree with you, Kaylee. Uh, to stay after practice to help others. Yes, there's an opportunity. Finally take the opportunity to compete. There you go. I love some of these answers. All right, uh, practice with someone, some of the sectionals and even with my instruments so I can understand more where they're at. Hey, part, part of this too is hey, you, some of you will have the opportunity to be vulnerable. Uh, some of you who say, I don't really, not real outspoken. Well, you have the opportunity to be vulnerable and get out of your comfort zone and speak up uh, where in the past you haven't. We have an opportunity as teachers to adapt to a new way of doing things. Uh, we have an opportunity to seize the things that are in front of us. Uh, some of you, I will tell you, um, for example, I am not a percussionist. I, hardly, I do not like doing, I do not like myself playing percussion. Neither does anybody else. Uh, I barely can do a rudiment. But can I go back and look at a bass drum or a cymbal player and say, hey, I can help you with this rhythm. Now, me helping a snare player, eh, I'm a bass clarinet, probably wouldn't go real well. Uh, and so, but I can go back there and go, hey, I can, how can I help you out? Or I have the opportunity to let them teach me something that I don't know. That's one of the things that uh, I always do with our drum line and I do a lot with our color guard. Um, and the reason I didn't say I don't know a lot about color guard is because I've asked so many questions and put myself and say, I don't know this answer. I don't know how to do this. I don't know what this means. And so, I encourage you to take the opportunity to be vulnerable and learn from the people in your band. That's what great leaders do. We, we, are, we are constant learners. Uh, so next one is T. T is for threat. Uh, what are some threats that you, uh, that are threats to yourself or your program? One of my threats is time management. Uh, one of my threats is I'm high risk for COVID. So how can I negate those threats? Um, so what are, what, another threat for me is I am not uh, a person who is always the great at, greatest at sight reading rhythms. Um, I can sight, I have a really good ear, but I'm not always the greatest at sight reading rhythms. So those are some of my own threats. What are some of your threats? And again, if you feel comfortable, please share it in the chat uh, as some threats either to yourself or to your program. One of the threats to our program this year is COVID as we talked about, but also a threat in our program is uh, that we may lose some people if we're not very, uh, very cognitive of all the people in our band program and meeting their needs. Oh, there, there's a good point. Uh, Lily, I was a sophomore drum major in high school. I completely understand you as a junior and there's seniors who think that they, that they deserve your position. Lily, let me just tell you, the more you can get and build relationships with those seniors, it's not only gonna help you as a, a leader, as a drum major, 
but that's going to help down the road with the juniors who are your age or younger because they're going to look up to the seniors. But Lily, don't go at uh, my suggestion for you on uh, that is don't go at them. Hey, I'm the drum major. You got to follow what I'm saying. You, if at the beginning you will take time to involve them in decision making as you can and to involve them in why you are doing things um, is will help you a ton um, because you'll get them to be ownership of the program that you're trying to lead. Let them make the decision. You may guide them to the decision um, and put it on a silver platter, but uh, you will get the decision you need. Um, and that's what we're looking at as leaders. Um, loss of time. Yes, time is going to be hard. Relationship building is going to be hard. Drum majors. I, I, and if you got a 300 piece band, this is hard. If you got a 50 piece band, it's even more important. Learn all everybody in your, your uh, band's name. That's one of the most important things you can do. Get a roster, learn their names, learn their sections. Uh, Hey, right now I can identify every one of our freshmen, our first year students by their name. And as soon as they get to campus, we're gonna take a picture of them where I can start learning their names with their faces. Cause all of us want to be called by our names. So that's one of the things that I would encourage you also to do. Uh, I'm making sure I'm not missing someone. Uh, potentially not having a problem or not having a program this year. Kaylee, I'm with you. I uh, don't really have a lot of idea at my elementary what that's going to look like. Uh, that is a threat. Um, loss of time, time management. Uh, so yes, John, uh, we got to make sure that we do, we, we're as leaders, we have to prioritize our time. That's a good threat. Uh, other things such as sports that are taking time away from band. Andrew, I'm going to talk to you on that because I was a drum major. I, I played three sports in high school. Uh, matter of fact, I was recruited here. The reason I'm at Campbell was because I was recruited here to play baseball. Uh, Andrew, if you type what sport you, uh, you play, I, I'm just interested in that. Um, but my, man, my major was sports management. Uh, you got you to gotta find it. Uh, one of the things that I encourage you, oh, Andrew, you run cross country. Cool deal. Uh, one of the things that I find, Andrew, uh, you will need to, you will not need to prioritize is not the word I'm looking, but the word I'm looking for you is find the one that helps you relax and find the one that you love to do. Um, and there's a difference. I play music now when I play my bass clarinet. That is relaxing to me. It is not a job. It is not stressful for me. And you gotta, you gotta work with the band or cross country to make it not a job. I also referee for fun. That's my stress management. Uh, Y'all can laugh. I referee, I've refereed professional soccer games. Um, I've done college baseball uh, and have done uh, a state champ. I was, this year would have been my year to have a state championship in, uh, women's lacrosse uh, for the state of North Carolina. So um, I do that as a relaxation point. You got to find ways that band is not a job, cross country is not a job. Um, and then, then you can take it where your academics are your job to get them through. Time management, Ashley, you're, uh, that's always going to be a case with leadership is how can we do time management? All right. I'm going to now stop sharing my screen. That was great. Keep that in mind. I encourage your section leaders. Hey, if you're friends, hey, when y'all get together, do a Zoom. Uh, if you're a drum major uh, at a high school or um, at, a, at a college, start texting. If you can text some of your students uh, or, the, or your peers that are in the band, just say, hey, how are you doing? Be invested in their life. You're going to get multiple, a lot more uh, ownership in your program and a lot more to use the R word that some of you said, the respect word. If you can go in and get that relationship, I don't believe in respect. Respect is, 
is just something we say because of a title. Uh, we as drum majors are not to be respected. We as drum majors are to build relationships. That's the R word I like to use. Respect, if you have a relationship, respect will come with it. Now, when you have a relationship, you have to be able to mold that into uh, where the lines are. Uh, because sometimes we become friends and as Iceline mentioned earlier, then we have that trouble of, of drawing the line and saying, hey, we got to get this done. Uh, you're my buddy, but hey, you've been 10 minutes late to practice for the last week. We got to fix this. How can I help you? Help me help you. Uh, that's one of the things when I'm refereeing, there's a book called Verbal Judo. <laughs> it says one of the words that it tells you to diffuse a situation is, how can I help you? What do you want me to do? All right. And so how can we help? And it, one of you mentioned, and sorry, I'm, I, I'm going to look back because I encourage you to learn names. So I'm going to do my best to, to say your name. One of you said that uh, listening was one of your strengths. Right there, Peyton. Peyton, one of your strengths was listening. That's amazing. How can I help you? Listen to what they need. And then be a part of the solution. Not coming down and condemning them. That's not your place as a drum major. Uh, your place as a drum major is helping them to be the best they can be. Uh, your director will take care of the discipline if there is if it's something that needs to be taken care of. Build the relationship. Ask them how to help, how you can help them solve problems. Uh, be there and listen to what they're saying. All right. Now we're going to do uh, another game because, and this is something I encourage uh, with you. We can talk about personalities and all these different things, but I just want to show you the different uh, aspects of this. Um, I'm going to read two scenarios and I'm going to tell you again, we're going to use our reactions down here. Uh, you got a thumbs up and a hand clap. If the first thing is you, you're going to give me a thumbs up. If the second thing's you, give me a hand clap. All right. And I'm going to try to, I'm going to try to give you the signs where, as I say it, that way, you know, you are describing you. This is a self-evaluation tool where you are aware of what you do. So I'm going to ask you, uh, if you have a problem and something's not working, do you move on or do you give, uh, not give up? And you can use the reactions or you can do it on your screen. You can clap, put your hands together for a clap or give me a thumbs up. If you move on, uh, thumbs up. Or if you're not going to give up, you're going to keep working that problem till you find a solution, give me a clap. Thumbs up if you're moving on. Clap, clap if you are not giving up. All right, clap, claps. Uh, you are the typical drum major. <laughs> and so uh, the reason I say clap, clap is the typical drum major because we don't ever want to give up on a problem. But sometimes the problem becomes the solution to the problem becomes greater than the problem. So people who want to move on, you're not, you're not horrible leaders. It's just how you do it. I'm a person who, if it ain't working, it ain't working, it ain't working, I ain't beating a dead horse, I'm going to move on. But I also have to respect the people who, uh, who keep trying and keep trying and keep trying. That's knowing your leadership, knowing the people in your, that you're working with. All right, next one. Oh, this is a good one. This is my favorite. All right, if, are you going to avoid a conflict? Thumbs up if you're avoiding a conflict or you're going to confront a conflict, you're clapping. If you're going to confront a conflict, clap. If you're going to avoid, you're going to give me a thumbs up. Hey, Natalie and Dylan and Zoe, be proud. You know that you, can, you, you avoid problems. Hey, Part of knowing this is how do you how do you do it? It's not a problem that you avoid conflict, but if you never address it, it is a problem. But what if you had? Uh, let's go back to our earlier thing. Take your weakness and get, and let someone else's strength. If you have a a captain uh, that is really good at dealing with conflict, hey hey, uh, and I'm gonna just use it because Kendall's our brass captain here. Hey, Kendall, uh, will you go take care of this problem in the trumpet world 
there be there seems to be some people who aren't getting along. Uh, do you mind taking care of that for me? Hey, yes. Now, just because you delegate it doesn't mean that you cannot you can forget it. You need to follow back up with Kendall to make sure. Hey, Kendall, did you find out what that problem was? What that drama was? Yeah, yeah, I found it out. We took care of it. We're all good. Okay, good. You as a drum major, you avoided the conflict, but you still got the conflict taken care of. So uh, again, knowing yourself. All right, next one. Uh, and this is a great one for me because I love it and I'm not the norm. Uh, are you steady and calm or excitable or steady and calm, thumbs up, steady and calm, thumbs up, excitable and passionate? Uh, clap. So steady and calm, thumbs up, excited and passionate, clap. Good, we got a good mixture. Uh, for those of you who are Campbell students and those of you who know me, I'm excitable and passionate. I love it. That's just knowing who I am. Uh, and I'm going to do one more and then I'm going to open it up for any questions. I have a bunch more that I can do. Um, but I don't want to do that one. Oh, here's a good one. All right. And this is going to be important for you as drum major to know for your section leaders. All right. Satisfied with good enough. Thumbs up. Are striving for perfectionist clap. Good. I like to see striving for perfection, but all of your people are not going to be that way. Leaders, we strive for perfection. Uh, so make sure you know that. The final one is this one right here, and then I'm going to turn it to questions. Delegating responsibility. Delegating responsibility, thumbs up. Assuming responsibility, clap. This is your nature. What do you do naturally? Delegate responsibility, thumbs up. Assuming, clap. Good. I'm a person who assumes the responsibility. I am working on delegating. Uh, some of my students would tell you I delegate really well, but uh, I am working on assuming uh, to delegate more. And so, guys, you cannot be the great in, in closing on this. And I had some quotes I was going to show you, but we ran out of time. I could do this all day. Um, but in closing, you cannot be a leader to a group if you don't first know who the leader you are inside. You cannot be a leader for the group if you don't first know the, who the leader is inside. Uh, that's my personal quote. Because if you don't know who you are inside and you don't know what your strengths, you don't know what your weaknesses are, then you are a liability on that field and you can't lead others. In order to lead, you have to know who you are first so that you can lead others to be great in their own entity. So if you got any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Uh, our chats, because uh, I only got one or two more minutes before Dr. Phillips says I got to go commercial break. <laughs> John, you are incredible. And not only are you in a, an, an exemplary model of what this university creates, you have definitely been a great model for our students as the student leadership here is beyond amazing. So thank you so much for everything that you do. Uh, we're gonna conclude this one, uh, this session, and our next session will start at two o'clock. It'll be Mr. Nate Campbell uh, doing a session on a, a drumline masterclass. Again, a reminder to all the teachers, uh, make sure that you put your name, school district, and state in the chat so we can get you your CEU credits. And um, beyond that, later today at three o'clock, we have Legit to Jazz with, again, Freddie Green. And our last session is at four o'clock again with the great John Owens and Betsy Williams doing a session on transitioning from high school to college. So uh, we'll take this uh, 10 minute break right here. Go uh, uh, get yourself a new glass of water for all our marching band folks out there. Hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. And uh, we will talk to you soon. Go camps.